Nano, Katie, and Michaela met each other in the morning. Shortly after, Oliver and Pete also joined them. The last one to arrive was Guy, who overslept because he was deceived by the ghost in his room clock. By the way, today, Nano was already wearing the school uniform like the others. Her uniform had arrived in her room the previous night. Meanwhile, Oliver couldn't stop thinking about the encounter with Nano earlier that morning. Guy suddenly asked why Oliver's cloak was a bit wet. Oliver didn't want to answer, feeling embarrassed to explain it all. Pete wanted to have breakfast instead of chattering endlessly. He felt he didn't have time to relax as the lessons on the first day were very packed. The first class was sword magic class, taught by Luther Garland. Before the direct practice with a thumb, he wanted to start with the definition of sword magic. He gave a chance to the students if they wanted to explain. Pete immediately volunteered and raised his hand. The other students thought Pete's action was just a show-off, especially since Pete entered the academy through the ordinary human quota. Pete began explaining without listening to others babbling. Sword magic is the skill of using a thumb. The first time which has added a thumb to a sword was about 400 years ago. The witch who did it was Wolf Batterwell. He was defeated by an ordinary human in a battle, and since then, witches carried a thumb to deal with close-range combat situations when they couldn't chant spells. In addition to harnessing the power of the sword itself, witches can also add magic without spells for illusion tricks useful in various situations. Master Garland was satisfied with the explanation. For the first day, he would only ask the students to watch a duel between two experienced individuals. He asked for two volunteers who felt experienced enough. Oliver immediately raised her hand without much thought. One student who had teased Pete also volunteered. He was Richard Andrews. Oliver had a feeling Richard wanted to prove himself stronger since Nano had defeated a troll before. Suddenly, Oliver raised his hand and offered to duel Nano. Of course, Richard protested. However, Oliver said that he had helped defeat the troll together with Nano. So, this was a good opportunity to show their strength. Oliver continued to provoke Richard to back down. Initially, Richard was still stubborn. But luckily, Michaela offered herself to duel with Richard. Michaela said that Richard would gain a lot if he could defeat her. After that, the duel between Nano and Oliver began. Before starting, Master Garland chanted Securus, a spell that rendered Thyrothames incapable of causing harm. With this spell in effect, no one would get hurt. According to the rules, student duels were only allowed using this method. The duel had no time limit, but it would end if there were any lethal attacks aimed at the head or hands. Oliver knew that Nano was a beginner in magic, so he decided not to use any magic and finish the duel at the right time. However, when he saw Nano's innocent zero, Oliver changed his mind. Nano was not the right opponent to hold back against. As their swords clashed, Oliver felt that he couldn't hold her off for long. He impulsively cast Grave Soil, causing Nano's footing to be sucked in. Just as Oliver thought he had an opportunity to attack, Nano managed to reposition herself and counterattack. Nano kept attacking relentlessly without stopping. Oliver tried to parry her attacks to the side since he couldn't withstand them head-on. He sensed that Nano's sword had taken lives before, not just 10 or 20, but he couldn't fathom how many people she might have killed. In the midst of the duel, for some reason, Nano suddenly shed tears. Oliver also wanted to wipe those tears away. Not any further thought without any regrets, and using all his abilities, Oliver changed his stance. Just as they were about to clash their swords seriously, Master Garland stopped the duel. Apparently, they had broken the secular spell without realizing it. In the spectator seats, Michaela asked Richard how many of Nano's attacks he could have held off. Richard showed a frustrated expression and didn't answer. Then, Michaela stood up and said there was no need for a second duel after witnessing the previous one. Richard himself had no objection to canceling the duel. After the sword magic class ended, Nano chased after Oliver, who had left on his own earlier. Nano was very satisfied with the duel, saying that it was the first time she truly enjoyed a fight. Her only regret was that they had stopped the duel midway. Nano invited Oliver to duel with her again, but for some reason, Oliver seemed annoyed and said he didn't want to duel with her anymore. 
Currently, it's break time, and Oliver and the others are having their meal near the fountain. Guy still remembers how challenging the previous class was, the Mantra Science class, which was immediately after the Sword Magic class. It was taught by Francis Gilchrist. Master Gilchrist didn't like relying on attempts. She believed that witches should be content with using just a wand. She had one principle if you call yourself a witch, then use magic. During the class, Master Gilchrist demonstrated summoning a large number of servant spirits. The academy was full of surprises. Over the break, the next class was Creature Magic class. Katie was looking forward to this class. While the others were still discussing the previous classes, Michaela noticed that Nano seemed melancholic. The break time ended, and they were now in the Creature Magic class, taught by Vanessa Aldis. Master Aldis emphasized that this class was not suitable for those who liked animals and found them cute. Katie immediately felt anxious upon hearing this. Master Aldous explained that the class treated magical creatures as resources. One could say that the class taught how to utilize lives. Master Aldous began explaining the task for their first meeting. Each student was provided with some magic silkworms. If magic energy was directed to their bodies, the silkworms would continue to create cocoons. These silkworms wouldn't mature if their cocoons were removed before they reached maturity. What needed attention was that if too much magic energy flowed, the cocoons would turn black, and the silkworms would evolve into fierce bee monsters. However, the students could use the Flama spell to eliminate these monsters. The task for the students was to create silkworm cocoons. The target for each student was 10, and the passing limit was 5. If anyone failed, they had to deal with it on their own and couldn't be helped. Then, the students began their respective tasks. Michaela managed to complete it quite easily, only failing once and properly burning the cocoon before it evolved. Like Michaela, Oliver could do it with little trouble. Meanwhile, Guy's cocoons kept turning black, but fortunately, he managed to burn them in time. As for Katie, she was doing it very carefully, and as a result, she only finished the fifth one. Even with the ninth, Katie remained patient and cautious. Observing her, Oliver was certain that Katie didn't care about the task. She was solely focused on saving the lives in front of her. Unfortunately, with the tenth silkworm, she was deceived a little, causing the cocoon to turn black. Katie couldn't bear to burn it and insisted on taking the silkworm out of the cocoon. Unfortunately, she didn't have enough time, and a beam monster emerged from the cocoon and attacked Katie. Oliver and Michaela swiftly cut down the bee. Due to them helping Katie master all this would reduce their scores. Until evening, Oliver continued to accompany Katie at the infirmary. Katie shared that her family kept various kinds of animals, from dogs and cats to magical creatures. She was particularly close to a troll named Patra. Due to her family environment, she couldn't stand seeing people harming animals or half-humans. Oliver imagined her home environment as an angel's nest. However, now Katie had descended to Earth and encountered the cruelty of the world. Because of that, she couldn't remain an angel forever. Nevertheless, if Katie continued to be kind-hearted, it would be noble, even more noble than an angel. Afterward, Oliver was leisurely strolling when Teresa suddenly approached him from her hiding place. She wanted to convey that she would return to Gwen's studio, so she wouldn't be watching over Oliver for a while. Dinner time arrived, and Katie seemed to have recovered after eating a lot. However, she noticed that Nana looked less enthusiastic. Oliver looked away when Katie mentioned it. Then, Pete suddenly remembered something. He had left his book in the classroom, probably forgotten during the Mantra Science class. Oliver and Michaela immediately suggested Pete to go with them, as lost items at Kimberly Academy might not be easily found. They could have been stolen by mischievous fairies. Moreover, there was a rumor that Kimberly Academy was built to cover up a labyrinth. At night, the labyrinth would enter the academy area. When they reached the classroom, luckily Pete quickly found his book. However, when they wanted to open the same door, a wall appeared to block their way. Shortly after, the surroundings around them changed by 180 degrees. But Oliver was sure that the teachers and seniors were patrolling to take care of the students who got lost in the labyrinth. Unfortunately, it seemed they encountered the wrong senior. The woman in front of them was Ophelia Salvadori, a fourth-year student. 
Oliver recognized her name. He had read Ophelia's essay on the theories of drastic changes in the crossbreeding of Kraken and Scylla. From her body, Ophelia emitted an aroma that fascinated others. Oliver was unaffected, but Pete briefly got caught by it. Nevertheless, they ignored Ophelia and went to find a way out. Unluckily, they met another suspicious senior. He was Cyrus Livermore, a fifth-year student. From behind, Ophelia managed to catch up and block their way back.